Welcome back to the Venezuela podcast brought to you by the Who You Know Network. We are proud members of the Parade Deck community. And as always, remember, don't try to see a transition. Grab the Vet SOS Lifeline. So happy to have Bill Kiefer joining us again today. This is his second time on the show coming on to tell us about his new book uh, that he's written here lately uh, to help you with this whole transition process. Uh, Bill, Bill's been working in the transition space for a little bit now and and just has this heart for it and does amazing things for our community. So it's going to be a great conversation. Make sure you tune in and definitely make sure you check out the books because this is a different point of view that I promise you is going to be something that uh, you want to check out. It's definitely going to be helpful. And, and plus, frankly, Bill, I just love talking with you. I mean, we had a blast at the MIC talking. And of course, we had a blast there on, we the on the show. Uh, so this is just absolutely great. Um, as well, I was going to say, as always, not as always, but uh, I am here with Keith Kassan, the Band-Aid Ripper of Transition here. Uh, he's uh, joining us again today while Eric is away. Um, how you, <laughs> you, do, you have an awesome logo, dude. Uh, so how are you doing today, Keith? I am living the dream, Sean. And uh, yeah, once again, it's absolutely amazing to be here and I uh, greatly appreciate uh, the opportunity to fill in for Eric. Uh, and yeah, I'm just humbled as always. So this is a great program and happy to support Absolutely. And we love having you. And Keith has been on the, the show a couple of times, so he shouldn't be a stranger at all. You guys have watched the show on a regular basis. Uh, you, you know where his heart's at. And you know what he loves to do, help, help in service members. So uh, if you haven't followed him yet or reached out to him, I highly suggest you do. All right. So let's jump into here. We got Bill. He's an Army veteran with 23 years professional HR experience. He's president and chief advisor of the Kiefer and Associates Limited, an advisory firm specializing in mil military veteran career transition leadership coaching, strategic talent management, and professional speaking and facilitation services. In addition to that, Bill has authored his second book, Veteran Career Journey, More Insights from the Employer Side of the Desk. He serves as a coach and coach advisor board member for the Honor Foundation, master trainer for Ranger for Life's A More Elite Transition, member of the Board of Advisors for Law Enforcement Connect, TEDx speaker, certified coach via Marshall Goldsmith and the Y Institute, and much, much more. And much, 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 much more. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, Bill, it, it's it's so great to have you back on here. And I, you know what? As much as we talk, I forgot about the Y Institute. I I, I sat down with you and we went through that whole process. Uh, just yeah. phenomenal way to look at that. Uh, and you talked about that on the first episode. So if people are interested in the Y Institute, check out Bill's first episode. Well, it was outstanding. So, Bill, how you doing today, man? Sean, it's great to be back. Holy smoke. Keith, nice to meet you. You as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I got off uh, four weeks of travel uh, yesterday and I leave again tomorrow. So I uh, got, got a great opportunity to get in here and spend a little time with you and, uh, you know, maybe give a, get a nap this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's uh, at no rush for the weary, right? Um, but the beauty yeah. of it is, is you're out there doing great things. It's not like you're, you know, you're just out there goofing around. I know, I know where your heart's at and what you're doing. So, uh, so real quick, you know, cause we talked about on the first episode, just give us, give us a highlight of, of your transition and how that whole process worked. Yeah. My transition stunk, man. It was horrible. Um, I had a great career going. I was an army logistics officer, got selected for promotion to 04 and then found out that I was getting divorced. Um, so that was the first time my, um, career journey and my life journey got came to a crosswise and I had to make some hard choices. Um, and I walked away from the military um, uh, on a promotion list. I had three then small wow. kids. I thought, you know what? My folks or my folks, my kids, uh, I think they need to know who their dad is. Turned out good. No felons. Um, one's a uh, 13 years Navy he enlisted as a parachute rigger and did the Mustang program. So he's now an aviation maintenance officer. My daughter's a nurse, and then my next oldest son is um, an Army chaplain, currently with 4th Battalion, 1st Group out of JBLM. So um, my transition was hard. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't want to be in transition. I didn't know how to do it. I stumbled, quite frankly. Um, and once I got my feet up underneath me and um, uh, figured out you know, what I had to do, I wound up having a really, really successful career. So, um, yeah, transition, I, I like to say, kind of happened to me. Um, although factually I checked, I uh, chose, I decided, I made the decision to leave. It kind of felt like it happened to me. And that's an important distinction when you're talking to folks in transition. If you make the choice and life is good, you know where you're going, your transition's a bit easier. 
Um, if life kind of happens to you or the military decides you don't get to stay, that's a different kind of transition. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I love the fact that you, you hit on a few key elements there. Is one, you felt like it was happening to you, not that it was something you chose to do, because there's a lot of people that go through that. And we, we talk about it a lot on here and we talk about it when we're talking with service members is you're not the only one. You're not alone in this, you know, and you were able to turn it around, you know, wind up having a successful career. Um, and I, I'm i still laughing about the felon comment. Um, having an <laughs> army chaplain is a good thing. There's no felonies. That, that's good. But uh, uh, it, it's it's just great to hear, you know, and the, and the fact that now you're still continuing your back, which is absolutely wonderful. I appreciate that. You know, I, I learned a lot in the transition. And, you know, while I was doing my HR work, you know, I was a senior executive in Fortune 500 companies. Um, I always, incidentally, people just kept coming up to me going, hey, man, you're a veteran. Uh, can you help my nephew, my brother, my cousin, whatever, because he's getting out and he doesn't know what to do. So I've been doing this informally for, you know, the better part of 30 years. Um, and it's just, it's a passion thing for me. Um, I don't want anybody else to have to go through the transition I went through. I figured, you know what, much like intelligence prep of the battlefield, um, I try to address this as intelligence preparation of the career battlefield to help folks that are facing transition or recently transitioned or maybe have already transitioned and are stumbling to get a better picture of what's going on in the world they're about to enter. You see the subtitles on my books are insights from the employer side of the desk. Um, as I've gone through this transition work, um, I found that employers, you know, the ones with the jobs, are often not part of the conversation. Now, for those folks that don't want to work, they're going to straight up retire. No issue. No big deal. But most folks that transition out of the military take some kind of a job. Many take salaried professional jobs, and they enter that world with absolutely no idea in too many cases of what employers are looking for and what employers know and don't know. Uh, what are the norms and expectations? So that's the genesis, the basis, the center point, if you will, for both the first book and Shameless Plug. The second book, um, where'd it go? I got to figure out which way things go here. Veteran yeah. Career Journey, more yeah. insights. Yeah. From the employer side of the desk. All right, per perfect segue. You know, so, so tell us, uh, tell us about the the book or books. So, my first book was it's 151 separate insights. I designed it to be written as a hip pocket guide, um, so people could read small bursts of stuff while they're, um, um, you know, otherwise occupied. Okay, it's a bathroom book. Okay. So um, been well received in that regard. And it's really practical stuff about what's what's life like in the general business world? What's the culture like? What's networking really mean when you're engaging with uh, uh, people from the business world? Uh, what is transition? Because it's a world unto itself. It's not where you've been. It's not where you're going. It's that kind of swampy, crappy area between the two that you just have to you know muscle through. Um, it's got different people and tools and techniques and processes. I try to share a bunch of stuff about that in the book. And then the final section uh, gives an overview of common uh, hiring, selection, uh, recruiting, and interview practices. So I had no intention of writing a second book. Um, in 22, I got engaged with a, uh, not engaged to, engaged with a uh, retired Army Ranger first sergeant. Uh, met him. He was a coaching client of mine. And uh, he goes, dude, we got to write a book. I go, dude, I wrote a book. It's not as much fun as you think. And he goes, no, 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 no. Your first book is about helping people get ready to transition. I said, okay. He goes, I've landed three great jobs in my two and a half years since I've been out, and none of them have fed the beast. We got to talk about what do you do once you land? I go, oh, shoot. I think we got to write that book. So we did. So we call it, again, shameless plug, aim that thing however we need to aim it. Uh, more veteran career journey, more insights from the employer side of the desk. The idea here is that transition is not a one and done thing. It's a first step on the rest of your career journey. So we address it with a couple of different thought models. The first one is we got to think about how you land 
because you're no longer. We actually use the uh, 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 metaphor of a parachute jump, right? You know, the getting prepared to jump and making the jump. That's the first book. Well, what do you do when you hit the LZ? That's the second book, okay? Because you're not jumping anymore. Now you're on the ground and you got to go do whatever it is your mission is to do, okay? You got to engage with those forces on the ground. You need to deal with the terrain that's out there and the weather characteristics and all that stuff, right? That's the approach we've kind of tried to take with this second book. So how do you land well? What are those first things you need to identify? The who's and the what's and who's who in the zoo and all that. Um, and in your landing, the very first day, few days, it's just about identifying things. That's it. We then take a second section of the book about integrating well. How do you integrate well with the people and the processes and the tools and the techniques um, that exist around you so you really learn about what they are, what they do, how they fit, and as important, what is it you're supposed to do and how do you fit inside of all of that? And then the third section of the book is how do you thrive and survive in the long run? Um, so you continue to add value to your life and your career, fulfilling your potential, going where you want to go, and continue to add value to the business. Okay, so that's kind of the structure of the book. Um, we also introduce a people, process, product, and service model because, quite frankly, those are the three buckets of things that business leaders think about. They think about their people. They think about their product or service that they're offering to their customer base. And they think about the processes by which all that comes together to make good things happen. Um, and we tie those two together in what I think are pretty interesting ways. While this has like another hundred or so insights, it's written a little bit different. It's more of a narrative. And in the book, we have over 60 stories that we've wow. actually experienced um, to help make the insight learning point along the way. So pretty happy with it. Well, actually, I'm ecstatic with it. It's a really um, nice next step to something I never intended to do. <laughs> that's and that's awesome stuff. Like, you know, um, yeah, I've been operating in the mentorship space for about four years. And yeah, we, we spend so much time on getting them ready to jump and then maybe making that jump. But, you know, statistics have shown, right, you're, you're pretty much statistically guaranteed to not be in the same job within two years after separation. Uh, yes. And then even beyond that statistics show, yeah, you're likely to have like four to six or three to five jobs in four to six years. So, you know, there is, yeah, we continue to navigate. Wow. Navigate. I swear it was just seltzer water. I put in this thing, but anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, navigating that transition space. And, and a lot of it's finding the passions too, right? Cause you, you even alluded to that. Like, uh, you know, I've had five jobs since I retired four and a half years ago. But each one was fine tuning that passion. And, you know, I've literally landed sure. my dream job now and I'm not going anywhere. But yeah, no, this sounds like an amazing book. I'm actually really uh, uh, interested in checking it out. So this is great stuff. No, that's awesome. I appreciate that. You know, we talk about um, things that are not common in the transition discussion uh, because. I mean, I was in the employment space for 22 years. I wasn't just in the civilian world. My job was to look at talent yep. and understand how talent, um, what's required in, in what uh, numbers and types and, and how should it be arranged to go make the mission successful for whatever the business happens to be. So it's a different look than um, some folks that are kind of in the recruiting space that, uh, I'm sorry, in the transition space that happen to be recruiters or otherwise, because I tie in that what the hell does it take for uh, uh, for an individual to be successful for the business? And then we also talk about what it takes to be successful for yourself, for your family, for your career. So your uh, career, your job, and your life journeys don't get crosswise. That's awesome. Uh, so first question that popped into my mind, because, you know, with the, with uh, reading... Um, is it a bathroom book? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those guys that sits down and reads. Depends on how long you're in a bathroom. I, <laughs> none of the stories are super long. Okay. Um, uh, they tend to be, uh, I don't know what you call them, like vignettes or something. Uh, yeah. Most of them are pretty, pretty quick reads. So, you know, depending on your hygiene habits. Yeah, maybe. I think it, there's a couple books that I've seen come out dealing with transition and all of them seem to be 
that type of book, you know, short in nature as far as chapters and stuff, easily digestible bites. And I don't know if that speaks to our uh, attention span uh, as veterans or if it's just the fact that we enjoy those kinds of things and it makes it easier to digest it that way. Uh, but, uh, but I know personally, I appreciate those types of things because you can find five minutes here, 10 minutes there where you can just, you know, digest a chapter real quick and, and take it in. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, most of society doesn't have quite the attention span it used to have. We all move pretty quick and we work in sound bites and all that. But I wrote this, uh, the first book, the way I did, uh, because I knew that the transition time is really difficult for a lot of folks. They're paying attention to exiting well from where they're, wherever they've been. They're paying attention on getting prepared for whatever the future might be. Um, and there's a lot going on. And oftentimes, you know, sitting down and reading a long narrative academic kind of thing just doesn't really work. The second book, shameless plug, third time, um, is um, written a little bit longer because while it's absolutely applicable to um, folks that are starting uh, on the front end of a transition, it's really helpful for those that have already transitioned or have gotten an offer and they're going, oh, shit, what do I do now? Okay. And they got a little bit more time. Things the rest of their life is probably a little bit more settled. And they got a little bit more time. So instead of, you know, reading for 60 to 90 seconds, they can maybe read, you know, two, three, four minutes. Um, none of these have to be, you know, you don't have to sit down and block out an hour. Uh, so. Yeah. No, and it's, yeah, the, the, the ability to, to retain it in, in smaller chunks too, right? Because I think it's, you know, our attention spans are shorter, but it's also the retaining aspect, you know, being able to internalize it and, and then apply it. Um, and with that, if you don't mind, I'd love to ask, like, so without I mean, obviously giving away anything too much from the book, but can you give us a taste? Like what, what would be either the first thing? Because I love the analogy of, okay, you know, you've jumped, you've landed, maybe collected up your chute. Like what, what's the first thing they should do? Or maybe what's the biggest thing you see that we don't do or that we tend to neglect and then realize after the fact, oh, crud, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think um, the best way to answer that is to say, in most cases, we don't think beyond the jump. I mean, before you land, you better have some idea what you're going to do on the LZ or on the objective and beyond, right? Yeah. So um, people get so caught up in leaving where they've been and getting ready for the jump, making, you know, what kind of aircraft are we going on? What are the winds? Do I have the right equipment? We got to do, a, you know, last minute retraining and all that stuff. And okay, yep, here we go. Then they get on the LZ and they go, uh, now what? That, that's not how we're trained. That's not our experience, right? Yeah, yeah. But in transition, there's nobody other than the fourth shameless plug, David and I, um, is going, okay, you've landed. Now what? So I think the point is to have awareness not only of the culture difference and where the gap is and that um, more abstract, esoteric stuff. It's how do I organize my mind to get ready for what's coming up. So we try to organize it by saying, first you gotta land, and when you land, you gotta uh, identify things. Don't get fancy, just identify the who's and the what's. And then you've got to start to integrate. And what that, what does that mean? It means learning about the people, the processes, um, the products and service. And over time, as you learn to thrive and survive, you then have to leverage everything you've learned for success for you and others. So I think the, 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 my opinion is the value here is it gives people a way, not just just to read what I think are cool stories, but to give them a way to organize their thoughts and efforts in a world that's really new and really different and really confusing. So um, that's, that's what we're trying to achieve with this, give you some kind of way to look at things in an organized fashion and say, okay, I don't have to do everything. Where do I start? Well, start with just identifying things and then learn about it. And well, what things? People, process, product, and service, because those are the three common buckets that business leaders tend to think about. So that's it gives you a structure, a mental structure on how to attack once you land, before you land. That's, that's such a great point, though. You, I didn't even, I don't think I ever considered that uh, when it came to what happens after I do the transition and I land now, what do I do? You know, I, I don't know that I ever even contemplated that. And over the last year, it's been like, 
you know, finding your way slowly and, and at times, you know, stumbling, falling and all that other stuff. So that's, I don't know why I just, the way you were explaining that this time, it finally sunk in, you know, it, it, it made it through the layers of bricks that, um, <laughs> something that never once even contemplated myself. And that, that, that's huge. That, that really is, you know, to, to think about the stuff that happens and, and what's the next course of action. And do you just stand there holding your shoot in the middle of the field, you know, for the, <laughs> at the next hour, or do you move out and seek cover? Um, so right. Man, no, I, I mean, hell, do you go northeast, south, or west? I mean, which way do you even go? So, yeah. And I, don't know, I just, I'm thinking of my own journey when I came out because it's, I get, I love this analogy, right? So, like, my journey, I had a plan. I knew where I was going to go as soon as I landed. I was going to click, I knew where to take cover. But then while I was in, 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 uh, as I was falling, a gust of wind came. And knocked me off course, and I ended up landing nowhere where I expected to. Yeah, I instantly found myself in unfamiliar territory, going, "Oh boy, <laughs> oh, yeah. now what?" Yeah. So, I mean, this book sounds like an amazing resource. If that happens too, it's like you know, some of us even come up with a plan, but you know, as Mike Tyson loves to say, you know, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. You know, so right, um, right, yeah, that, that, sure, yeah. Sure, words. Have well, with that upcoming fight, fight, we could do that a whole different direction. But I guess oh, right, yeah, <laughs> yep, yeah. No, that, so, this is great stuff. Based on what you just explained, Bill, and then Keith, what you just expanded on, I now have the third book. Because <laughs> I know how much you enjoy writing. I'm a big fan. I grew up on the Choose Your Own Adventure books. So I think you need to do a Choose Your Own Adventure with this whole parachute idea. What You get blown off course, then you have this adventure. And so it, you got a million different ways you can do a Choose Your Own Adventure with this. <laughs> So, Sean, have you thought about being an author? Because I'm not averse to a third. You know, once I did one, I didn't want to do two. Now I've done two. It's like, hell yeah, let's do three. What's the good idea? You know? So, actually, I, I am working on a book right now. Um, which, you too, huh? Wow. Uh, yep. And uh, I, I had my meeting with my editor yesterday, and, and she's like, because I've been kind of stuck. And she's like, just just enjoy it. I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Is why am I writing this book if I'm not going to try to enjoy it a little bit, you know? And yeah, uh, yeah, it's because I don't want to be like at the end of it going, Oh, that sucked. I don't ever want to do that again. You know, it's, and maybe it's not for me, but you know, it's something to try and have fun with. And um, yeah, you know, the thing that's been the outgrowth for me from the second book is uh, Dave White and I founded veteran career journey, a 501 C three based on, it's both books, actually, but inspired by the second book first. Um, and we actually have that up and running, uh, veterancareerjourney.org. And the mission there is to help close that culture gap that stands between employers and, and, and veterans. And quite frankly, to help reduce the challenges, the employment, the money uh, making kind of challenges that are contributing to veteran suicide. Uh, through the course of writing and since it's been published, uh, we have lost buddies to suicide. We go, man, if they only knew this. And uh, so we're super passionate about that. Got a great board. Uh, and we came out of the gate strong. Uh, we uh, founded in November last year. And uh, by February, we were able to get over 700 copies of the books due to generous donations from others out to participants of the Honor Foundation. So our mission is to uh, close the gap and prevent or reduce veteran suicide. But our method is to get books out in the hands of veterans via training that we will build based on those books. And our target, quite frankly, is the conventional forces. Uh, Honor Foundation and others do a great job for the special operations community. Uh, but I think there's a glaring need um for transition support for the conventional forces that i think we can offer a unique value so uh yeah there's it is right on the runner veterancareerjourney.org there you go. yeah and that that's amazing like i love hearing about so you know because yeah i mean wearing a shirt Oop, rock that over here right same thing with the book trying to figure out which direction i'm going here but anyway you know like you know yeah I, I, I'm, I'm transparent about my my past and so as a veteran uh as a suicide attempt survivor even i like that's that's it's a very real thing so I'm I'm curious out of just out of my own personal interest, but for even for our listeners, how do folks like support something 
like how or not some, but how they support the 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 veteran career journey if they're interested. Yeah. So the we honestly uh, the the thing we need now is money. We need money to go make stuff happen. Uh, if you go to veterancareerjourney.org, we have it set up to take donations that way. Um, certainly, folks can get a hold of me directly. I serve as not only the founder but the unpaid executive director, so I'm managing the business. Um, you know, when you start a nonprofit, uh, the IRS is funky about actually being a nonprofit, which means board members can't. You know, uh, there's some self-interest clause in the law that. Yeah, so uh, I'm not on the board. Um, I'm the founder and the executive director. I'm doing it as a volunteer thing. Um, but they can get a hold of me and I can walk them right through the process. We have a pretty lofty goal for our first year. We're looking for $120,000 total in the first year um, to get books out and to get training based on those books, both live where we go at or near an installation and we deliver classes based on the books and the content and uh, live online classes where people can dial in. And, um, so, yeah, veterancareerjourney.org or connect with me on LinkedIn is the best way. And uh, I will, you know, help who's ever interested to donate uh, robustly and often. <laughs> I love that. Stuck that one in on me. Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, you know, because we're once again we're getting down to time. It seems like today yeah. is just flying. Um, real quick, what, what's that training look like in, in your mind as you start to think about how you're going to roll this out? Is it something where they they as part of the training they get the books and you work out of the books like a kind of a workbook type thing? You know, what are you looking to do? Yeah, so uh, for the in-person classes, uh, the live in-person classes, the idea is to have a one day based on the first book, a second day based on the second book. And we're working right now to try and figure out how to do, once you register, get you a link to the Y assess, the Y operating system assessment. So we go, okay, because my belief is for successful transition, you first got to know who are you, what are you bringing to the party, and how you define success. So if we lead off with the Y assessment, I go, okay, this is, you know, we, you know, we do a feedback session and all that. And then we get into the, I would say, the first day one class uh, is book one. And we talk about the five chapters and throw in some stories and make it interactive and those kind of things. And then we'll have a second day session based on fifth plug, book two. Um, similarly, we'll break it down by the three sections, landing, integrating, thriving, surviving. And the idea for me is for each of them to walk away with some kind of at least a skeleton for an action plan going, not only did I hear it, but here's how I'm going to use it. The other interesting piece um, that we're uh, uh, focused on is for those that have spouses, inviting the spouses. Nice. Because nice. uh, transition is a team sport. Nobody does this successfully alone. Yep. Um, and I think that's unique in the space. So the employer insight focus is unique and the invitation of spouses is unique for the online courses as we grow those and develop and those are in development. The idea here is to have um, like four or five one hour segments. So you know, nobody's going to sit through a half a day online training. Yeah. Um, and we're still playing with the format of that. But, All right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Love it. Uh, well, Keith, I'm going to turn it over to you to take us home, buddy. But, man, Bill, great seeing you again and talking with you. Uh, love what you're doing with this stuff and, and can't wait to, to see what you actually uh, can do here with the veteran career journey. Thanks, yeah, Sean, yeah. Really yeah and, that, and just real quick, just one last time, get it up there. Let's see that last plug. I don't know if it's five, fifth or sixth, but let's see that book one more time, Bill. Uh, oh, this is number six. There you go. Number we six. Chewed, there we go. We so him up he, he wasn't I know, know, right? Yeah. So no, everybody check that. Bill, Bill, where, where can they do to get the book and how can they get in touch with you? Uh, both books are on Amazon. Um, real easy. Just type in Bill Kiefer. They'll pop up or you can type in the titles either way. Um, and they're on uh, paperback or in ebook. Awesome. Awesome. Well, everybody be sure to look Bill up, uh, get those books. They sound amazing. I'm, I'm going to be doing the same. And, uh, as always, on behalf of the Veto Vet SOS family, I would like to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, please make sure to follow and subscribe to us on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. And remember, don't drown in the sea of transition. Grab the Vet SOS Lifeline.